Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Iatrogenic preterm birds due to certain high risk conditions in obstetrics becomes a necessity to prevent maternal as well as fetal morbidity and mortality. But if a baby is born too early, the lungs may not be fully developed resulting in increased neonatal intensive care unit admissions and several respiratory problems in the newborn. Here come the role of corticosteroid injection antenatally. And what it does? Its administration may increase the production of surfactant in the fetal lungs which may increase the pulmonary artery blood flow. Probably due to accelerated lung maturation and its effect on vascular structure. So hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. Subscribe our channel for future video and today we will discuss the RCOG guideline about antenatal corticosteroid to reduce neonatal morbidity and mortality. And if you want to study the full written guideline, follow the link in the description. Now, the first question written in RCOG guideline is that when should a course of corticosteroid be given in case of preterm labor? The answer is a course of antenatal corticosteroid should be given within 7 days prior to preterm birth to reduce the perinatal and neonatal death and respiratory distress syndrome. And the appearance you can see from the chest x-rays here. Now, what discussion should we do with the patient about the risk and benefits of corticosteroids? For women undergoing planned cesarean birth between 37 and 38 plus 6 weeks, an informed discussion should play, take place with a woman about potential risks and benefits of the course of antenatal corticosteroids. Okay, so we need to tell that although antenatal corticosteroid may reduce the admission to neonatal unit for respiratory morbidity, it is uncertain if there is any reduction in the respiratory distress syndrome, transit tachypnea of the newborn or neonatal unit admission overall. And the antenatal corticosteroid may result in harm to the new need, which may include hypoglycemia and potential developmental delay. So we need to discuss all these things to the patient. Now, which women are candidate for corticosteroid? Corticosteroid should be offered to the woman between 24 and 34 plus 6 weeks of gestation in whom imminent preterm birth is anticipated, which may either be uh, due to established preterm labor or preterm pre-labor rupture of membrane, also called P-PROM or planned uh, preterm birth. Okay, so remember this gestational age 24 to 34 plus 6 weeks. And for plant cesarean, as I have told you, it's 37 to 38 plus 6 weeks. Now, corticosteroid regimens for twins and triplet, what we should do in their case. There is no specific criteria for them and it's written in RCG guideline that women with the twins and triplets should be offered targeted antenatal corticosteroids for early birth in line with the recommendations for singletons. Coming to the corticosteroid used in PPROM. Antenatal corticosteroids should be offered to the women with a PPROM who are at increased risk of preterm birth in order to avoid the risk of respiratory morbidity in them. Now, this corticosteroid has a great role. Antenatal corticosteroid um, use reduces the neonatal death when the first dose is given within the 48 hours prior to the birth. And beta methasone reduces the risk of neonatal death by uh, 31 to 40%. Now, can corticosteroid be given within 24 hours of, uh, of the birth? Because I told you earlier that uh, it's preferably given within 48 hours prior to birth. 
So about this, it's written that benefits are also seen when the first dose is given within the 24 hours of the birth and antenatal corticosteroid should still be given if the birth is expected within this period of time. And how long the administration um, of corticosteroid is effective in reducing uh, respiratory morbidity about this is written that it is most effective in reducing RDS in uh, pregnancies that birth between 24 hours and 7 days of administration of second dose of antenatal corticosteroids. Now what are the benefits of corticosteroids in planned cesarean birth at term? The NICE guideline recommends that planned cesarean birth should not routinely be carried out before 39 weeks of gestation. But due to certain reason, if the woman is undergoing planned cesarean birth between 37 and 38 weeks of gestation, an informed discussion should take place with the woman and her family member or carer as appropriate about the potential risk and benefits of the course of antenatal corticosteroids. Okay, so do proper discussion with the patient regarding the expected risks and some benefit provided by corticosteroid. Now let us talk about corticosteroid in women with diabetes mellitus. Diabetes should not be considered an absolute contraindication to antenatal corticosteroids for the fetal lungs maturation. NICE guideline addresses the use of antenatal corticosteroids in the woman with diabetes. But if the woman with the diabetes is receiving corticosteroid, additional insulin should be given according to the agreed protocol and closed monitoring should be undertaken at that time. And at the same time, we should know that corticosteroid administration is associated with increased rate of neonatal hypoglycemia as well hyperglycemia in the mother and hypoglycemia in the neonate. Now something about pregnancies complicated by fetal growth restriction, preeclampsia or antipartum anti, uh, hemorrhage. RCOG guidelines says that birth should not be delayed for antenatal corticosteroid administration if the indication for birth is impacting the health of the woman or her baby. NICE guideline recommends a course of antenatal corticosteroid should be offered if planned early birth is necessary for hypertension in pregnancy. If imminent preterm birth is likely, a course of antenatal corticosteroid should be offered to the woman whose babies are thought to be either small for gestational age or have fetal growth restriction, but women should be counseled about the lack of evidence to guide care. Now, what is the optimum dose and route of administration for a course of antenatal corticosteroid? In UK, it is recommended that 24 mg dexamethasone phosphate is given intramuscularly in two divided doses of 12 mg 24 hour apart or four divided doses of 6 mg 12 hours apart. Okay, so give 12 mg, wait for 24 hours, give another 12 mg dose or we can uh, give 6 mg dose after every 12 hours completing the 24 mg dose in total. This is for DEXA, dexamethasone. And a Cochrane systemic review found that dexamethasone compared with a beta-methasone reduces the risk of intraventricular hemorrhage in the baby as well. And alternative is uh, beta methasone. So 24 milligram beta methasone sodium phosphate or acetate makes given intramuscularly in two divided doses of 12 milligram 24 hour apart. So the dose is almost the same in DEXA and beta. Now what are the contraindications to the use of antenatal corticosteroids? 
first contraindication is serious risk to the mother or the baby okay so birth should not be delayed to administer antenatal corticosteroid when there are serious concerns about maternal or fetal condition that will be alleviated by expedited birth means we cannot wait for the dose of antenatal corticosteroid in such case and this is considered as a good practice in the presence of systemic infection the potential uh, beneficial effects of antenatal corticosteroids intended for the baby are balanced against the effect of exacerbating the severity of systemic infections both for the woman and her baby okay so in severe infection you have to weigh the benefit of giving or not giving antenatal corticosteroid that depends upon the clinical situation overall now in what circumstances should an antenatal course of corticosteroid be repeated women should be informed that there is no reduction in serious morbidity or long term benefits have been seen with the repeat corticosteroids but the babies who repeat um who receive a repeat doses of antenatal corticosteroids are smaller means uh, low birth weight and reduced length there is currently limited evidence to recommend repeat courses of antenatal corticosteroid if the woman remains at imminent risk of preterm birth 7 days after administration of antenatal corticosteroid however a further course may reduce the need for neonatal respiratory support and the maximum number of corticosteroid courses given in any one pregnancy should not exceed 3 and that was all about this guideline thank you so much for your kind listening and if you want me to make a specific video related to any topic of obstetric and gynecology let me know and write in the comment section I will try my best to make presentation on that topic. Thank you so much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 